Welcome back Trippers, I've been a busy guy in the last month uh, finishing off the second bank. So what I've done is I've soldered up uh, all the packs to go in the second bank and I've got them in the point that they've been um, balancing themselves in the last two days and this video is going to be about um, taking that connection off. We're well, first telling you what I'm doing, um, the taking the connection off and then reading the voltages um, and how well they're balanced before plugging them in and getting them going. So what I'll do is I'll just show you what I've done. This is exactly the same as previously in one of my much older videos uh, when I very first started to balance this pack here which was the first or this, this bank here which is the first um, trial of balancing them for the first time this way. What I've done and I'll try and get this a bit in focus is I've got the, the nickel strip run down and it's just a long piece of of strip and it goes all the way down to the bottom that's for the negative and then I come across to the positive and I did exactly the same thing and then what I did was I pegged it all so that the um, so that I can easily remove them but also so there's a, a good connection between the the strip and the obviously the the pack itself so what I've been doing is uh, I've put you can put a clamp meter actually around different parts of the the strip like here and a bit lower down and you can actually see what's happening um, whether the, the the current is flowing this way or if it's flowing down it's quite interesting um, but it's pretty much to the point that there's not much current flowing so I've tested the pack here and I've tested the pack much further down and there's pretty much no current flowing now so it's been about uh, I'd, I'd say about 36 hours that it's been sitting all set up in parallel so there's a lot of cells all in parallel right now. Um, it's currently around 4.12 uh, volts. And it's pretty much time to pull off this and test the cells individually to check what the voltages are. And then what we can do is um, connect them up and get them going. So what I've done today is obviously I've, the pack, the, the main bank is bank one, is fully charged after pretty much yesterday's use. And if we look at the the charges here, this is what it's been doing today. So this one up here has done 1.5 kilowatts. It's put into the battery, which is pretty impressive. This one here is 1.6. This one here is one point, pretty much 1.3. So we've put, what is that? It's uh, 3, 4, 4.2 kilowatts between all that. If my maths is kind of correct off the top of my head. 1.5 plus 1.6 is 3.1 plus yes yeah, so that's pretty good so that's what I took out of the, the batteries last night now the other thing is this um, charger here is doing some weird things with its voltage it's reading 12.51 all the rest are reading 67 and the one at the top is running is reading 68 the voltage on this one is doing something really wacko not too sure what but uh, the only thing different between this and the rest of the three is this one here I haven't changed the input capacitor which is, sits up here these ones here obviously are the ones that are changed out so as you can see these ones these two units here are fine but this unit here is doing some weird wacko thing with its voltage it still works fine it still puts out it was, when I came in, in here the other day it was reading 9 volts but it was still putting out 400 watts so there's nothing wrong with it it's just reading something really weird anyway just um, just that was kind of a bit of an update on those so if we come across here this is ready to go what I what I started with on this was negative positive negative positive but what I thought well because the packs in here are going to be quite close together the obviously the middle um, sets of packs which was these ones here but I've decided to for now put them on the end because that way it gives me more room to play with them and my next set of packs I can slide in the middle um, or otherwise when I move things around I can always move these ones back over to the to where they should be which is in here so that I can when I get my third one going I'll build them up onto the end so anyway what I've decided to do was go negative positive positive then negative and then negative positive so I'll try and I'll just bring the camera up here and I'll just um, show you at the top of the screen but that way if anything happens to the packs if any wire slips or anything like that or if a wire comes off or does something weird 
it's only the positives touching another positive which is absolutely going to be fine so not that that will ever happen but for whatever reason if some connection got loose or something happened it's another safeguard by putting the, the two positives um, side by side and, and not having a negative sitting right next to it because that would be a, um, a big problem if obviously that connected so a bit of a safety thing so as you can see this one here has got positive on the left this one here has got positives on the right so this will go up to the top and connect to there and then we'll have our negative going to negative positive negative positive all the way down so what i'll do now is i'll um, stop rambling i'll just disconnect very carefully um, all those pegs and that um, that nickel strip and uh, i'll bring the video back in a second Right, now that it's all done, it's looking pretty good. So if I take this camera back a bit, it's looking pretty impressive now. So that's 10 kilowatt hours, two banks are five kilowatt hours. The second bank's actually just over five kilowatt hours, but that's all right. So the other, now the dispose the couple of things that I've changed. How, where's a good example, this one here. I've shrunk, uh, shrink wrapped it from here to up to there using a different type of shrink wrap or a different um, or one from a different manufacturer and this has worked out really well so these sit in the nice and smooth and they're nice and safe compared to these ones over here where they don't go all the way up and sometimes there's a very small gap so what I'll do is when I here's a perfect example of that gap so what I'll do is when I next pull out these cells or these packs what I'll do is I'll re-shrink wrap these with the same style as this because I really like that and it looks nice and tidy and neat so next step really is to do the voltage check on all these and I'll just try and arrange the camera and we'll just do that so it's a bit later at night unfortunately I'm re-recording re the voltage check on the cells mainly because I recorded everything and the microphone went flat halfway through so I'm just recording that luckily I haven't done anything else so we should just be able to um, redo that so here's the voltages of the cells after they've been balanced right I'll check the microphone's working wow it is okay good so here we go we have a total of 82 volts uh, Oh, it'll be fine to check them individually. So, okay, so first one is a 4.1, second 4.1, third 4.1, fourth 4.1, fifth 4.1, sixth 4.09. Seventh, four point one, eighth, four point one, nine, four point one, ten, four point one, eleven. I'll just, uh, in fact, you're not going to be able to see it all if I move it down. Maybe you will. Let's give it a go. Maybe you won't be able to read. Mm. Let's try and get that better in view. That could be better. It's good enough. Right. No idea what number we're up to. But I do know that we're up to the green topped cell. So. 4.1. Turn these around. 4.1. 4.1. Four point one, four point one, four point one, four point one. It's, it, it is quite incredible how balanced they are. Four point one one, four point one one. 4.11 so 
0.01 of a volt difference so I would say these are pretty well in balance which is really really good for a starting point okay so this is how it's looking So pretty much what we've got, if I come up to here, we've got our positive here. And that's obviously positive, negative all the way down to the very bottom with our negative at the bottom. What I'll do now is I'll make up a cable that'll plug into here and go across to here. And uh, I'll have to make sure that this cable is exactly the same length as this cable here because we're going to put them in parallel. So I will get that done, but that is what 10 kilowatts or 10 kilowatt hours of batteries of 18650s looks like on my setup. Right, so I've just finished soldering up the second one of these. So I've made these exactly the same length and with any luck, this will work. So what I'll do is I'll screw that down on the bottom one and then I'll now make the positive one at the top. Right, so that's how it looks. Both of them are connected down there. What I'll do eventually is I'll um, put these up so that they're nicely in place. But for now, they're all there and uh, it looks pretty good. So now I will do the positive. Okay, so I've just connected that up. Now what I've done is I've actually connected it to the second one mainly because this is an 8 gauge cable, this is an 8 gauge cable, this is two of the 12 gauge cables I think, no I think it's, I can't actually remember, but it looks slightly longer than these ones, these two are exactly the same but this one looks very slightly longer so I, d I just thought for now I'll just connect it up to there and I will move it across to there um, and I'll just see what the difference is but for now let's keep it exactly the same because we know those are exactly the same if I do use this one with the slightly longer cable going through this circuit breaker I might have to just very sh uh, might have to shorten this lead here very, uh, ever so slightly but either way let's just we'll get, come to that later but I've connected that up I've just put these wires at the top here for now I'll clip them up nicely later uh, but either way these are all done now the other thing I forgot to mention before was the first bank here is all of um, cells that are 2000 amp hours to uh, 2000 milliamp hours and above this group here which is actually the, the second bank here is cells that are 1800 to 1990 pretty much so these ones here don't fall into this category as good as these but there's more of these cells so what I'll do is I'll just flick up a spreadsheet and you'll see what I mean I've got three different different banks and because I'm using the lower very slightly lower capacity cells only by you know sometimes as you see here 20 milliamp hours not much but others are a little bit more of a difference uh, but you'll see that I've um, I've increased the amount of cells so these ones here have got 32 cells in a bank uh, in a pack these ones here are 34 uh, 36 cells in a pack so what I'll do later on I'll show you the video of comparing the three different um, pack sizes but either way I just thought I'd mention that so either way that is uh, what 1200 and something cells and roughly about 642 5 kilowatt hours uh, and I'll show you on the spreadsheet it probably makes it a bit more obvious but either way what I'll do now is I'll just show you the voltage so what I'll do for that is I'll just zoom you onto here now if I turn on the bank of just or the, the original bank so bank one we're reading pretty much 81 volts Now if I flick on bank 2 in a second, I'll just wait for that voltage to go down. What, why the reason it goes so slowly down is mainly because the, um, the charge controllers over here have capacitors in them and the capacitors charge up. So that's why 
when there's pretty much no load, no resistor on it, it takes a while for those capacitors to drain down. But either way, so let's turn on the new bank. Now this is pretty much 82 volts. So they're charged to that 4.1 volts per cell. The other bank I'm charging to just over 4 volts a cell right now. So, I just wonder what will happen if I turn both banks on at the same time. Obviously what's going to happen is that if one bank is going to be pulled down while the other bank um, charges up until they kind of equalise together because they'll be in parallel. Um, so I'm not too sure what the best thing to do is, whether I just run on, this, on the, the new bank tonight and then it'll charge up to pretty much exactly the same as uh, that um, the first bank and that way I can turn it on tomorrow night and they'll be exactly the same pretty much both charged to the same point or whether it's not going to really matter too much and I turn both banks on at once maybe put some comments in the section below um, to whether I turn both on at the same time or I wait until tomorrow night and I turn both banks uh, I turn bank, both banks on when they both reach the same charge rate because um, what will obviously happen is that the the current will flow through and out the other one to charge it but obviously uh, we don't really want to exceed 32 amps and I don't know there's not that much of a difference between the two banks there's obviously the four point the four volts versus or four point something volts versus 4.10 so yeah I don't know really what's going to happen if I do that but probably be best to be safe than sorry and just run off that new bank tonight so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment below, subscribe if you still haven't subscribed, and um, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks guys.